Let's look at all the one-star games on the Nintendo 64. Now, there's no official list or anything like that. I just kind of scoured, you know, Reddit news groups and stuff like that, finding out, yeah, news groups. <laughs> I haven't used the Usenet news group since the late 90s, which was right around the same time the Nintendo 64 was relevant. Never mind my resources. We already did the one-star Nintendo and Super Nintendo games, and now we're looking at one-star Nintendo 64 games. Agree or disagree with anything on the list? Make sure you let me know in the comments. And subscribe, always, because we're looking at other one-star games and and five star games coming up very soon. Starting off the list with Batman Beyond Return of the Joker. How many times the Joker got a return? Good lord. See, if Batman just used a. Well, never mind about all that. Batman Beyond, what a great idea. What a cool story. Instead of just having the Batman thing, let's have, you know, Batman all old and stuff and training the new Batman. Well, unfortunately, uh, they should have trained the new Batman on a different console because the Nintendo 64 version. Not great. It's not terrible, terrible. Like, I don't know if I would give it a one star, uh, but man, this game, it, it just doesn't feel polished enough. And I'm not just saying that because it's on a Nintendo 64 system. The controls are a little weird. The fighting is a little weird. You could do so much more with a Batman game than this. Than this. So it hurts my feelings to see a game like Bat based on Batman Beyond, again, which was a, a very wonderful series. And this is the game you get. Man, I mean, if only there are other DC games on the Nintendo 64 that were just as terrible or maybe even more terrible. I don't know, but I guess we'll find out. Batman Beyond, avoid it if you can. Because all the other good names were taken, this game's called Big Mountain 2000. Well, the game came out in 2000, you're on a big mountain. Skiing game, okay. Well, it starts off like it looks like it might be pretty cool, right? A little anime-looking things here. Well, not like proper anime, it's more like Fox Kids after school anime. But still, it looks like something. And you're like, oh, these, these characters look pretty cool, they look pretty awesome. And you choose your character, and then you all just kind of look like polygonal the same and not like your character that you chose at all. <laughs> really? It's like, hey, here's how trendy you look, and now you're in your winter coat. Oh, it's like the 80s and Halloween all over again. That make your, your mom makes you wear your coat over your Halloween costume. Well, anyway. And again, it's not that this game is super, super terrible. It just, it kind of is. Because there's only so much you can do with this game as you're skiing downhill. It's the same sounds. Just about everything makes you fall over, and you make the same sound every time you fall over. That'll get annoying. Well, you get an easy way to avoid that. Don't get knocked over. Don't run into things. Well, yeah, easier said than done, right? You would think there's like hidden pathways, but they're not very hidden, are they? <laughs> well, you know. Ski as you will, you even have like a behind the scenes view, which is kind of weird and sometimes confusing when you accidentally hit it and it gets kind of weird. Big Mountain 2000 could have been a lot better, but I think also at the time, we already had so many other great skiing and snowboarding games that this game wasn't really needed. Oh well, at least we tried. Clay Fighters, 63 and a third. Now, I love me a good pun, and shout out to the um, Police Squad reference there. And this is not the Sculptor's Cut. This is this like the regular version. It's Clay Fighter, 63 and a third. Now, Clay Fighter for the Super Nintendo was ahead of its time. Clay Fighter for the Super Nintendo, it looked cool. It used that kind of new claymation style that they're experimenting with. Give it a little bit different feel for a fighting game. I mean, it wasn't a great fighting game, but it was something kind of fun and something that maybe you rented. And they probably could have left it as a Super Nintendo game, because now that you're on the Nintendo 64 with more things you can do, uh, they tried, and again, with a name like Clay Fighter 63 and a third, that's exactly what this game feels like. It just doesn't feel like a complete game. And different fighting games for the time were working on different things. You have games like Street Fighter 2, which was all about the moves you can pull off. You got games like Mortal Kombat, which rely on strategy and really learning each individual character, especially for things like Fatality. And then you had games like Killer Instinct, which really relied on the combos. And this game tried to rely on the combos, I think, a little bit too much to have you even care about anything. And, and, and again, you, it's not needed. This game wasn't needed. This game does get props because you can play as Earthworm Jim, but as much as you can give it props for Earthworm Jim, you have to take away all of the props and then some for having a, well, racist character. <laughs> this game, oh my God. There's no way they could get away with a game with this character anymore. And there's a lot of Nintendo 64. This didn't come out that long ago, in all things considered. Anyway, no. Dark Rift was another fighting game that you could have played on the Nintendo 64. Again, this is during a time, of, I mean, fighting games were red hot. I mean, not just 
beyond Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat, but now you have games like Tekken. Now you have games like Soul Calibur or Soul Edge or whatever they called it back then. Um, and this game played a little bit like a combination of both of those. A little bit like Tekken, a little bit like a Soul Calibur or Soul Edge or something like that. So this game had a lot going on for itself. And unfortunately, it just needed to be its own game and not try to copy another game. It didn't look terrible, I don't think, by Nintendo 64 standards. It just didn't play that great. And it, it wasn't, at the end of the day, not very fun, not very exciting. I mean, there are some kind of cool looking characters, I guess, in this game, but then sometimes you don't even know what's going on. The polygons are all over the place. Dark Rift is one you could probably pass up on. I know it's funny, as much as I love Earthworm Jim, featured in two one-star games on the Nintendo 64, well, at least they tried. The problem was with Earthworm Jim, wacky, crazy, kooky, fun, and a great action platformer at the end of the day. Earthworm Jim 2, more the same. By this time with Earthworm Jim, you're just like, okay, I get that there's gonna be some wacky, crazy, zany jokes, and the jokes are just kind of stale. You're just like, oh, a golden udder. Uh, okay, cows, yeah, cows are silly, cows are, it's, but you have to have a good game to go with it. The game's not great. So no amount of jokes or puns or anything like that is gonna help with this game. You're just like, yeah, it, it, it's like when you watch a, a magician for the ninth trick in a row, you're like, well, of course you're gonna pull out a rabbit, or first, of course you're gonna choose my card, because that's what you do, it's all gimmicked. And this game, as much as it could be decent, and I, and admittedly, I had a little bit of fun with this game for a little while. It just get, it just got kind of bored, got kind of stale. So many other great 3D action platformers, even on the Nintendo 64, even before this. And meh, I mean, thank you for having another Earthworm Jam game. Appreciate it. ECW Hardcore Revolution. Well, after Acclaim stopped making WWE games because they got that THQ, Aki engine and all that with the Ukes, all everything, which was the right thing to do. Um, Acclaim still had access to WWE stuff, and maybe WWE said, hey, you know what? You can have uh, the ECW games instead. You know, back then ECW was working with WWE kind of behind the scenes, it wasn't really public knowledge. I don't need to go into a whole lot of details about that. But unfortunately, I was such a big fan of ECW, and I knew what I was going to get into with these Acclaim WWE style wrestling games, and it was more the same, which is not good, not fun, it's just, I mean, it it looks a little clunky. It looks a little awkward. Of course, I had to check it out because I love ECW, but it still played like those old games. And again, with the controller techniques and how this wrestling game plays, and it just wasn't great. And it wasn't a fun experience. And it was ECW. It should have been way over the top. And it wasn't. Cool that they had wrestlers in here that may have never been on a wrestling game before and probably never will. It's unfortunate that it was this one. Ah! Full forward Powerball! Mike Piazza's Strike Zone. I'm guessing it's Piazza. You know, like pizza or Forza. Anyway. Now again with me in sports games, the baseball video games are generally pretty good. Are generally pretty worth playing so long as the uh, so long as the camera angles are good enough so I know like where to throw the ball to first base, how to swing the bat, you know, things like that. Unfortunately with this angle, I can never time it just right where I know I can connect with the ball if the ball would connect. It's always too late. It's like, like as soon as I swing it, and it's like, it's too late already. Which is a terrible time too, because by the time this game came out, I mean, Mariners were still doing pretty well, all generally speaking and everything. And it's just hard to exactly know when to swing and know where to go. Okay, so I, I lucked out with a home run, but still, <laughs> but I couldn't not get a home run. It was Ken Griffey Jr. Of course I got a home run. Uh, again, the game, and when it comes to pitching, that's where the strike zone comes into play, where it has to be like perfectly in the strike zone for stuff like that. You play a baseball game to swing at bat. You're not playing a baseball game because you can't wait to throw pitches. You know what I mean? Could have been a lot better. There are better baseball games out there. It's okay to skip this one. I embraced the idea of a Mortal Kombat Mythologies series, and we have Mortal Kombat Mythologies Sub-Zero. Was the original idea eventually everyone was going to get their game? I don't know. It's working in reverse, like Super Smash Bros. takes all these iconic characters, puts them in the one, one game. Mortal Kombat Mythologies has the idea of let's make spin-offs featuring the different characters, but unfortunately this game plays still like Mortal Kombat, like you have to move from screen to screen or room to room or whatever, and then fight off these enemies in a very Mortal Kombat style, Mortal Kombat fashion, and the fatalities might happen to you just by walking into a room. <laughs> I, I died more times in this game from stuff 
than from uh, than from the enemies. Very, very awkward. Your C buttons are your attack pow buttons and everything, and then like your A or B button, one of those, um, makes you either look to the left or look to the right. You don't just automatically look the direction you want to look. The controls were off. The game itself is off. They had this one, and maybe they ended it. And you know what? That's probably for the better. We have the Olympic Hockey Nagano 98. Here is your Olympic hockey game. And the hockey games can be pretty good. I'm not great at hockey games. It's so easy to be penalized. It's like, dude, just let me play the game. And so much of this game, it seems like the referees is blowing their whistle for no reason. It's like, dude, I don't even have a chance to do anything. And then when you actually do something, it's a little chaotic. It's a little hard to tell where you are. I mean, it, it shouldn't be because there's a big old arrow pointing right to where you should be. But unfortunately, still not great. <laughs> So this game, as far as the hockey games go, there's better ones out there. And yeah, I, I, a lot of people are talking about this game being not great. If you love, love, love hockey, you probably have this in your collection. But man, I bet you you're playing Wayne Gretzky more than this. I would hope so. Power Rangers Lightspeed Rescue. Now this is a Fox Kids game. So when you think Power Rangers, you're like, all right, Power Rangers. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show up and we're gonna, you know, beat some bad guys and we're gonna, you know, turn into things and do the, you know, gonna have a fighting game or something like that. Uh, no, you're cleaning up the city. Uh, okay, so round one, stage one, you're cleaning up the city. There you go. That's what you've been reduced to, public work. You beat the level, finally, you're gonna get into a fight. No, you're gonna drive this uh, fire truck and uh, put out the cars that are on fire. Yeah, that, and that's, you're shooting at them. It's, it's turned into a shooting stage where you can't even turn around. You can only just move up and down and, you know, hopefully your angle of the fire will, <laughs> or hopefully your angle of the water will actually be able to uh, hit the cars that are on fire. And finally, okay, we're transforming. We got our Megazord going on. And then this is your Megazord. Um, not a terrible idea to have a first person view of your Megazord, uh, but it still, it controls very awkwardly and plays very weirdly and not the optimal experience, especially for a Power Rangers game. Now, when you move on from there, you do get a little bit more. You can actually like get into fights kind of, but then you're still like cleaning the streets or in this case, clearing logs out of a way of the path. I don't know. No, no, come on, no. <laughs> Now, the Powerpuff Girls was a wonderful cartoon. Girls liked it because it was Powerpuff Girls, and guys liked it too, just because it was quirky and zany and fun, and kind of cool, right? Well, when you have a Powerpuff Girls game, in this case, for the Nintendo 64, Powerpuff Girls Chemical Extraction, well, Power Stone it is not, and boy oh boy is it not. It is a 3D room fighting game where <laughs> this is what it looks like, this is it. You're kicking and punching the guys who are super close. If you're close to an item or object, you can pick that up and throw it at them. And that's really about all this game is. And that's all you need to know about this game. If this counts as a fighting game, in my opinion, probably it could be somewhere in my top five least favorite fighting games, which hurts my feelings because I love Powerpuff Girls and Powerpuff Girls, in my opinion, deserve a fantastic game. One of the ones on the PlayStation 1 wasn't so bad, but we never got like a super great Powerpuff Girls game. It's unfortunate. Yeah, how about a game from EA Sports? They're in the game, and this game is uh, Supercross 2000, Jeremy McGrath, Supercross, uh, yeah, there we go. Jeremy McGrath, Supercross 2000. Try to articulate it here. And I'll tell you my biggest gripe about this game here in just a little moment, but right now, you're just going through the track. You've seen games like this before, they can play okay. They're not great. I mean, even at the time, too, we're getting a lot of like, okay, you know, sh where's the fun? Show me the good things. Show me the dangerous stuff or whatever. What I like about this game is the fact that you can do tricks. What I don't like about this game is you don't have enough time to do any tricks. Like, a lot. Like, you know, this game would have benefited. It's, fortunately, it's EA Sports, and EA Sports really tries for that authentic experience. Good for you. Give me moon jumps. I don't want the authentic experience. I want the crazy experience. Unfortunately, you try to do any trick in this game, and you almost always, <laughs> especially if you're me, um, end up not landing and not connecting and falling off your bike anyway, so you can't even do them. And that, for that reason, is why uh, this game is terrible. Next, Superman for the Nintendo 64. Superman for the Nintendo 64. What I leave off the list, you let me know in the comments. You can check out this other video as well, looking at more one-star games and more one-star game videos are coming up soon. And some five-star games too. We gotta take the good with the bad, right?